Sloane Stevens beats Madison Keys to claim U.S. Open title. It was springtime in the United States, and the women's tennis tour was in full swing, with the clay court season underway. Camel Murray received a call from his injured protege Sloane Stevens, who explained that she was ready to start practicing. Murray, surprised at how soon the call had come after Stevens's foot surgery in late January, said he told her, O.K, call me when you can walk. They were soon on a court at UCLA in early May, with Stevens sitting on a wooden table with a racket in her right hand as Murray tossed her balls. He then had her sit on a backless office chair with wheels, so she could roll around and hit some more. Neither of them could have imagined then that she was actually on the verge of winning her first Grand Slam singles title. Impossible, I would say Stevens said as she stood in Arthur Ashe Stadium on Saturday with a United States Open trophy in her hands. Even tennis, a sport where comebacks are the coin of the realm, has rarely seen a revival quite like this. Stevens, a 24-year-old with an incandescent grin and a potent blend of offensive and defensive skills, was ranked 957th early last month after having returned to the tour in July. But on Saturday, she beat the number 15 seeded Madison Keys, her American contemporary, 6-3, 6-0, in just 61 minutes in the US Open final. Laughing outside the locker room shortly after Stevens's victory, Murray said he would not have believed in May this result would come. You always expect to play well and try hard and give a good effort, which she has been doing very consistently he said. So long as you do that, you put yourself in a position to win, but to win this many matches so soon, she is blessed. You do earn a lot of your luck in tennis, and Stevens could have been overwhelmed by the occasion. Saturday's final was the first major singles final for both Stevens and Keys, who have been friends since their junior days and have played on Fed Cup teams and Olympic teams together. But this match was a shared experience on another level. Stevens's resurgence has been astonishing in its speed, but Keyes has made a convincing comeback of her own after two operations on her left wrist in the past 10 months. Tabbed as a future number one by Serena Williams, Keyes, 22, is arguably the most powerful player in women's tennis. Stevens is arguably the quickest, but she also has ample punching power. And while the explosive Keys struggled with her emotions and her accuracy, Stevens often looked as if she could have been raking sand in a Zen garden. She prevailed convincingly in a duel that has a chance to be replayed on the game's big stages in the years to come. I should just retire now Stevens said during the trophy ceremony. I told Maddie I'm never going to be able to top this. I mean, talk about a comeback. Maddie is Keyes' nickname, and though their first Grand Slam final was no classic, as the huge hitting Keyes repeatedly made errors from the baseline, it was certainly a touching occasion after it ended. Stevens was exultant after clinching the victory, but she soon tempered her celebration, walking to the net and sharing an extended embrace and intense conversation with the emotional Keyes, who was in tears. I didn't play my best tennis today and was disappointed, but Sloane, being the great friend she was, was very supportive Keys said, still fighting tears at the ceremony. If there is someone I have to lose to today, I'm glad it's her. Stevens later sat down next to Keys before the trophy ceremony, something the Williams sisters have done for years after their major finals. Stevens and Keys chatted and joked with each other, hiding their mouths from the cameras with towels. I told her I wished there could have been a draw, Stevens said later. Stevens, who will rise to number 17 from number 83 on Monday, is the first American woman not named Williams to win a Grand Slam singles title since Jennifer Capriati at the 2002 The Australian Open. Stevens also joins an esteemed list of African American winners of the US Championship which began with Althea Gibson 60 years ago. Stevens was born in Plantation, 
Kepler, in 1993, the year before Venus Williams turned professional, Serena Williams would follow suit in 1995. But in her early years, Stevens was a fan of the powerful and extroverted Kim Clijsters, who was one of the many who congratulated Stevens in person on Saturday. Stevens's mother, Sybil Smith, was a leading swimmer at Boston University. Her father is John Stevens, who was a running back with the New England Patriots. Her parents split early in her life, and she had little contact with her father. But she was re-establishing a relationship with him before he died in a car accident in September, 2009. Stevens was playing in the junior event at the US Open at the time. She left the tournament to attend the funeral and then returned. She has long been considered a potential Grand Slam champion and has worked with some of tennis's leading coaches, including Nick Saviano, Paul Anacon, Thomas Hogstad and, through the United States Tennis Association, David Nenkin. She reached the Australian Open semi-finals in 2013, beating Serena Williams in the quarter-finals. But she struggled with consistency and played with a style that many analysts considered too defensive. She has come into her own by finding a renewed passion for the game after an 11-month injury layoff. There's a different look in her eyes since she came back said Chris Evert, a former number one player who has known Stevens since she was a junior player. She is projecting calm between the lines now, but calm is not nearly enough to defuse big talents like Venus Williams and Keyes, the two Americans whom Stevens beat in the final two rounds in New York. Stevens is also striking the right balance between defense and offense, rarely overhitting and putting ample top spin on her big forehand, which gives her plenty of margin for error. Time and again on Saturday, she rebooted points with her defense, resisting Keyes' direct attacks with counter-punching and lunging slices. But she also was able to land direct hits when she needed to, coming up with two huge and precise passing shots as she broke Keyes in the second game of the second set. Keyes, despite her aggressive returns and the sparkling form she displayed in a rout of Coco Van Dua in the semi-finals, rarely managed to get traction on Stevens's service games. She had break points in only one game, taking a love 40 lead with Stevens up, 4-0, in the second set. But Stevens won the next five points to hold. She finished with 10 winners and only six unforced errors, three of them in the final stages of the match. That is a tiny error total for a match of this magnitude. Keyes had 30 unforced errors and 18 winners. Stevens is the lowest ranked player to win the women's title at the US Open in the Open era, which began in 1968. Klijsters, returning after the birth of her first child, won the event in 2009 without a ranking. But Stevens, who reached the semi-finals in Toronto and Cincinnati before arriving in New York, was a clear threat coming into this tournament despite being unseeded. Now she is a Grand Slam champion, just like the Williamses and Klijsters. When the game gets taken away from you Murray said, you are reminded how much you love it.